In module two, you're going to spend all of part one looking at conversions. Some of the other terms for this can be dimensional analysis or factor label method, and it's just about converting units. Now, you want to really put a lot of time and effort into this because there's a certain method to how we do math in chemistry. It's a very visual method, and it's a concept of having units that are the same match diagonally. So you're going to learn how to lay this out with the metric chart as well as with the uh, English unit chart and then converting between the two of them. And the reason this matters is because I want to show you in future modules, you can see the layout is going to happen next week. And then you're going to see just a second. The layout happens again for test three, more for test three. And then you're going to also see it having test four. And then even in the uh, final section of learning. So it's really important to understand the material now. And if you don't understand it, then to get questions, uh, get your questions ans answered and ask for lots of help or watch a lot of the extra playlist videos. So this topic is so important. If you naturally know how to convert between units without using this method, you still need to practice the method. It's like an easy way to use that method. Once you get through all of the conversions and allow time for that homework, you're going to go into looking at atoms. This course is in atoms first uh, ordering. And what that means is that we begin looking at chemical systems on the atomic level, then move out to bonds, and then move out to bigger pictures. So you're gonna review where are the protons and neutrons and the electrons. Here's a little hint, protons are positive, neutrons are represented with an N. And then you're also going to be looking at the difference between ions and isotopes. So this right here shows the difference between isotopes, and this is the difference in ions. Ions, different ions have charges. And you're going to be able to count protons, neutrons, and electrons for different ions. You're also going to be counting protons, neutrons, and electrons for different isotopes. And in this one, that is the number where the isotope matters. Then finally, at the end, you're going to be using an equation that looks like this to figure out information about isotopes and what the percent abundance of uh, either different isotopes or the overall atom.